Where's the crash site now? Over there. We're getting closer. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to the second section to chapter 13 in my enslaved hard difficulty video walkthrough. And this is the the last part to Grand Theft, as we sit on this lovely elevator, not quite, you know, Mass Effect slash Deus Ex style elevator, but still pretty hefty. We're going to be going down and we're going to be doing the, the more combat heavy section of this level. So strap in. You know, do your Dragon Ball Z thing, and uh, hopefully kick some ass with your stick. And um, we'll be able to steal this robot and get on to the last level of the game, and the end of the, the walkthrough. And uh, the lovely achievement for beating it on hard that I'm sure a lot of people are using this to get. So, all this is going to be is be moving room to room to um, to make sure that this power core survives, and that you can that you can survive it basically but before you get there there is going to be some platforming so when the platforming is, is, is on you know full effect I'm not going to talk too much about it because the platforming is absolutely simple it's literally like Uncharted it's as simple as that but this is the room with the the big fight and what's going to happen is these cores are going to descend they're going to show themselves they're going to be lovely you know glowing glowing pillars of light and they are the energy to the robot that we're trying to steal so there's your your lovely electricity storming glass that's what you have to protect. Enemies are going to come, they're going to start spawning, and they're going to try and destroy these these cores. And there's a little cutscene to show you where they come from. They cut through the door, alien style. And um, you just have to fight them. It's, it's that simple. And it looks a lot more intimidating than it is because they don't seem to destroy these these big vessels very quickly and a lot of the time they'll attack you which is exactly what you want because if you've got to this part of the game you're obviously quite adept at the combat and you're probably just going to be handing some robots their metallic asses but um, when it does get challenging is more of the cores will pop up the room is kind of set out in in a square and each of the corners a core is going to come up where you have to defend it so you might have uh, two sets of robots attacking two different cores at the same time but it's just a case of prioritizing so that you kill them as quick as possible and you get the other ones uh, from destroying the core so uh, anyone that's been watching my videos will know my strategy is to, to spam the, the super ability which is my glowing rod which could be a euphemism for you know a phallus but I'm not going to go there and just beat a guy up use the special ability to kill him then ch charge it all the way back up and, and beat the next guy up and block frequently use your charge shot if they start blocking so that you can you know get past the the shield and uh, just have fun with it because the combo and the the combat should i say in this game once you understand it becomes extremely easy the only times that you get your ass kicked is if there's a lot of enemies or somebody hits you off screen but it shouldn't be too much of a problem because if you've been upgrading your life you will have more life than i have right now but it's it's totally not necessary and uh, just prioritize the guys who give you the quick time events to kill their friends because it'll make it a lot quicker and uh, that's probably the last I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about is because there's some other things to, to to discuss the first one is I need a shave and I know that's kinda random but when you're doing these commentaries and you've got this headset on the first thing I can feel is a bit of stubble on my face because uh, I have a pathetic beard my ass can grow a better beard than my face can that's just to show how bad my facial hair regime is and it's not a case that I'm actively trying to grow anything, it's just a case of I forget to shave because I have so, I can I grow such pathetic facial hair. Kind of like a shabby Labrador. But these little cutscenes will intersperse between the combat, telling you that you you one step closer. I'm not too sure if they checkpoint, but I've got a feeling that they probably do. So that is definitely something to bear in mind. But uh, I, I tweeted the other day and I actually figured out that if you click the the <laughs> the mentions tab it shows you all the people that have responded to your tweets so I look like a, an ignorant bastard because I've not replied to any of these people that have said really nice things on Twitter and I've just been like I don't even know it was there so I do apologize for anybody that's <laughs> that's been trying to contact me via Twitter I don't I didn't know to check that shit I was just using it as literally a bulletin board before I get a website if I do get a website type of thing and uh, yeah so I've I can keep in contact with people on there now which is kind of cool but uh, back to my original point uh, I think it was um, oh, I can't remember what it's fucking is it TSG? TGS? I think it's TGS Tokyo Game Show I believe it's called uh, Sony are having a massive presentation there or have had a massive presentation I'm not too sure when it happened I'm not too up on TGS too much but I believe it's happened because there's been a bunch of of trailers for things, a bunch of more information regarding the PlayStation Vita, which is the new PSP, and um, some of the exclusives that will be coming to the PlayStation 3 to, to broaden its its admittedly weak exclusive lineup. And 
the, a lot of the games that I've been seeing have been have been uh, declared on both Vita and the PS3. And um, the ones that stood out to me firstly is I saw the the new trailer for Devil May Cry or DMC as the call it because they're going all hip with the kids and all that shit. Which I don't care too much for. It better be called Devil May Cry because that DMC just looks like some wanker wannabe rappers spray tagged it on his mum's wall and uh, never a good thing. But I had a lot of doubts regarding the game when I first saw it because Dante looks like something from Twilight, it looks like it could be a spin-off of Glee, it all looked pretty stupid because he was walking with his lovely knee-high boots on and his, his jacket looking like a twat with his brown hair and anybody that's played Call of Duty will know obviously about Devil May Cry because the two things are practically identical. Now, anybody that's played the original Devil May Cry's Dante always had white hair, it's a staple of the series, and he didn't have white hair, so it's kind of like, what the fuck is going on here? And they're kind of doing the whole, you know, Batman Begins things by re completely revamping and redesigning what Devil May Cry means, because uh, as good as Devil May Cry 4 was at a mechanic level of the fighting, uh, the game itself was kind of weak. It, it didn't grow that many new Devil May Cry fans, because it was, you know, ten levels repeated twice with two different players, and... Um, 75% of the people that played it hated the new character that they introduced and the fact that they were reusing levels and, you know, it wasn't the most inspired game design, but the people that enjoyed the old Devil May Cry and looked at it from more of a combat perspective thought it was great, which is, I'm in that category. So this new game, it probably needs a, a new change and that's exactly what it's getting because they're changing a hell of a lot of stuff and as I've said, I wasn't all that confident in it. Then I played this. And the combat in this game is not great, it's, it's simple but effective and it works. And there's definitely some charm to it, but it's nowhere near as, as nuanced or as intricate as your Devil May Cries, as your God of Wars, as your Ninja Gaidens. So, I was kind of worried at first, but I played this, and this game is fantastic. It's good storytelling, it's good platforming, everything feels a, a suitable level of polish. Everything is fun, and they've been given the Devil May Cry license which is Hybrid Theory or Hybrid Ninja I think Ninja Theory fucking hell what am I saying Hybrid Theory that's a Linkin Park album good god but um Ninja Theory is the development team and the new trailer they've released is showing numerous weapons it's showing air, air juggling it's showing different combos and the game looks really good man from just from a combat perspective it looks like it could be really really good and we already know that, that Ninja Theory can make good games and they can make polished games and they're going to be taking an engine, I'm hoping, or I don't know if they're making their own engine, but they're going to be taking these archetypes of Dante who's built to have, you know, several moves, all very different, that you can chain together in different ways and each weapon brings a new, uh, a new move set. So, on paper, this is a match made in heaven, you know, a completely different design direction keeping the combat, keeping all the intricate juggling and combo systems, keeping all the crazy weapons and a couple of crazy looking enemies with chainsaws and this giant fat lady that looks like a slug and just, just all sorts of crazy stuff happening so I am stoked, I don't know when it's coming out but I'm a massive Devil May Cry fan so that shit is going to be getting oh I can't wait for it and the guide uh, it'll all depend on <laughs> how hard the game is depending on what guide I do but I will hopefully be doing a, a Dante Must Die difficulty run Um. But like I say, it all depends on the challenge. If the game's easier than call, uh, than Devil... Why do I keep saying Call of Duty? God damn it, I'm, I'm possessed. It's like fucking Qui-Gon Jinn sat behind me giving it the whole, you know, credits will do fine. No, they won't. With Watto, and he's trying to buy the fucking Naboo parts. Uh, I do apologise for some old school Star Wars fans if I've just shit on the memory of the films for you with the new ones, but it was the first thing that popped to the head. And I'd already said Qui-Gon Jinn, so I couldn't exactly say these are not the droids you're looking for, because that's Obi-Wan, we all know this, Alec McGuinness. But, back to the point, the new Devil May Cry looks the shit. I cannot wait. And um, if it's as easy as Devil May Cry 4, the guide will probably be an S-rank run of Dante Must Die, because... Uh, a little factoid for people that aren't too up on the, the lineage of, of, of the DMC series or Devil May Cry's. Devil May Cry 4 was easy. <laughs> it really was. Anybody that played Devil May Cry 3 for any extended period of time will know that after that game, any game is probably going to be a little easy because Devil May Cry 3 
will literally finish off on your face on the first date and then punch you directly in the mouth. It doesn't care. You could be the president of the Devil May Cry universe. It's still going to take a shit on your desk and then ask you to pay for the bill. It's unbelievable how, how difficult that game is. Especially on Dante Must Die difficulty. Especially trying to get the SS ranks, which are more than an S rank because on that game, what happens is all of the criteria, if you get an S in them, you get an SS. If you get anything other than an S, you will only get an S as the highest grade you can get so the SS ranks were fucking ridiculous and one of the damage statistics that they dropped on Devil May Cry 4 which I was super grateful for was damage so this is a game that on its hardest difficulty every enemy takes a thousand hits and if they hit you once you don't get the SS rank because you will fail to get an S rank in the damage statistic that is about as sadomasochistic as it gets but that is the end of the 13th chapter to my enslaved guide, people, so thanks for watching, I hope it helps, and you take care now.